Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, this morning I have some good news and I have some bad news. First, the good news. Punxsutawney Phil did not see his shadow. So, according to Punxsutawney Phil the groundhog, that means there will not be six more weeks of winter. However, Grubby the groundhog is to make an appearance in Hope, Indiana about right now, 8.30 this morning, and I would say, by the looks of it, maybe he is going to see his shadow. Which means, for us in this part of Indiana, if the groundhog is right, six more weeks of winter. Usually ask people what February 2nd is, and they'll tell you that it's Groundhog Day not even knowing that this whole tradition of the groundhog, the sun, the seeing the shadow, all this flows out of the Christian festival, Candlemas, a day focused on the light, not the light of the sun, but the light of the true sun, the S-O-N sun, the Son of God. The day, this day, 40 days after Christmas, where the church commemorates what happened when Jesus was 40 days old. This day that basically serves as the official end of the Christmas season. When Mary and Joseph take Jesus to the temple for the first time. And he's greeted there by Simeon and Anna. as They were waiting for the Messiah. As they confess who Jesus is and what he will do. So this morning... We're not going to get too concerned about the weather predictions that Grubby the Groundhog or Punxsutawney Phil make. Instead, we're going to focus on the light, on Jesus, the light of the world. We're going to focus on what Simeon and Anna say in the temple as they teach us who this baby, this 40-day-old baby, truly is. Now, it goes without saying that Mary and Joseph had to be shocked that day when they took Jeru uh, Jesus to Jerusalem for the very first time. When they go into the temple, here comes this strange man up to them and takes Jesus from Mary, probably, who was holding him, and begins to praise and thank God. Mary and Joseph would have not had any idea that God had given that promise to Simeon, that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Christ. Now on this day, on that first Candlemas, not only is Simeon able to see Jesus, he is actually holding Jesus in his arms. And so he prays, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. Yes, Simeon confesses that Jesus is salvation. Simeon knows and believes that the baby he is holding, his salvation, that he is the Savior, and he's your Savior. For he is born to save you from sin and from everlasting condemnation. And even though Simeon is an old man, yet he knows that baby that he holds is even older. For he is the eternal Savior, the eternal Son of God. The one who has no beginning or end. Simeon also confesses that this baby is the light. The light to enlighten the nations. The light for the Gentiles. All last month, all four Sundays in January, we looked at the Old Testament readings, which were all from the book of Isaiah. All prophecies about the coming Messiah. And each of those four Old Testament readings had this same common theme as they looked ahead to the coming of Messiah. They all four identified the Messiah as the light. Either as the light for those who sit in darkness, as the light for the nations, light for God's people. 
So here we have Simeon, who knows these Old Testament prophecies. When he's holding baby Jesus in his arms, he confesses that this word from God, these prophecies have been fulfilled, that the light has come. Yes, Jesus is the light. He is the light of the world. He is the light for nations. And he is your light. Hence the name Candlemas. That's the reason, historically, there were candlelight services on Candlemas. Yes, not only to rejoice in that reality, like we talked about in the little sermon, that Jesus is the light of the world, but he comes to be your light. Your light in the darkness of your sin and suffering and trials and troubles. Your light in the hour of death as you mourn and grieve the loss of those you love. Yes, Jesus is the light for you. And he's the light for all nations. And because he is the light for those, for all, both near and far, both young and old, we seek to bring that light of Jesus to all people. Today, as we not only celebrate Candlemas, but also National Lutheran Schools Week, we rejoice that our school children hear and know of Him who is the light. They know of Him and what He has done for them. That in our school they hear of Jesus and of God's Word, that Word that is a lamp for our feet and a light for our path. Yes, on this Candlemas, on this National Lutheran Schools Week, we rejoice that our children in our school, the children in our church, know of Him who is the light. That they have received Him who is their light and their life. So Simeon confesses that Jesus is salvation. He confesses that Jesus is, is light. And then he goes on to confess that Jesus is glory. That he is glory of God's people Israel. Now when you look back in the Old Testament... And it talks about the glory of the Lord. What the glory of the Lord is in the Old Testament is the visible manifestation of the Lord and of His presence. A couple of examples here. When the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, they were led by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. That cloud, that fire, were called the glory of the Lord. That cloud, that fire was a visible sign to the Israelites that God was with them, that he was, in fact, leading them to the promised land. On the day that the temple was dedicated, in Solomon's time, miraculously, the whole temple was filled with smoke, and that smoke was identified as the glory of the Lord. Again, a visible manifestation of the Lord's presence, that, in fact, the worshipers could realize, yes, the Lord is present in this temple, to forgive and bless and strengthen us. Well, here on the first Candlemas, the first time that Jesus is brought by Mary and Joseph to the temple, certainly the glory of the Lord is in his temple. For Jesus is the glory of the Lord. Jesus is the visible manifestation of the Lord. For Jesus is God. We read this in John chapter 1. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory. The glory of the only Son of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yes, on that first candle must the glory of the Lord did fill the temple because the Lord Himself is in the temple. Like we sang in the hymn, In His temple now behold Him. Yes, Jesus is the visible manifestation of the Lord. Because he is the Lord. Jesus is the visible manifestation of God's presence. Because he is Emmanuel. God with us. God present with us. 
And certainly throughout his ministry, Jesus would reveal that he is God in human flesh. He would reveal the glory of the Lord through his miracles, through his powerful preaching, and the ultimate revelation of his glory, resurrection from the dead. So Simeon confesses that Jesus is salvation, light, and glory. And then it's Anna's turn. Anna, like Simeon, had been waiting in the temple for the Messiah. This 84-year-old, who had been a widow for decades, was looking forward to the coming of the Messiah. And so when Mary and Joseph bring baby Jesus in, she too thanks God. And then our text says she speaks to others about this baby that is going to bring about the redemption of Jerusalem. Yes, Anna confesses that Jesus is the Redeemer. Now that word redeem means to buy back. That's precisely what Jesus has come to do. Yes, we can't pay the price for deliverance from our slavery to sin, death, and the power of the devil. But Jesus comes as our Redeemer to pay the price for us. And he's going to pay that price not with money, not with gold, not with silver, but with his holy and precious blood and his innocent suffering and death. What amazing things both Simeon and Anna confess in the temple that day. That Jesus is salvation and light and glory and redemption. Making that confession of this baby that's only 40 days old. But how is Jesus your salvation, your light, your glory, and your redeemer? Well, Simeon knows the answer to that as well. For after confessing these things... Simeon turns to Mary and says these words, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce your own soul also. Yes, Jesus is the embodiment of salvation and light and glory and redemption. But the way he's going to accomplish that salvation, that redemption, Simeon confesses is by being opposed, by being rejected, ultimately by be, being put to death. Simeon is able to prophesy, to tell Mary that when that time comes, namely on Good Friday afternoon when she is standing at the foot of the cross and watching her firstborn son die that brutal death, that a sword will pierce her own soul also. The Candlemas, the events that happen when Jesus is 40 days old in the temple, bring together both Christmas and Good Friday. Looking back to Christmas, who this baby born in Bethlehem truly is, but also through Simeon's words, looking ahead to Good Friday, to how he will accomplish our salvation and our redemption. Yes, Jesus is your Savior as he offers his life in order to save yours from eternal death. Jesus is your light because he gives up his life on that dark Friday afternoon. Jesus is the glory of the Lord because he didn't choose the glory of man. He chose to walk the way of sorrow for you. Jesus is your redeemer because he actually allowed himself to be sold for a mere 30 pieces of silver. So that you could be bought and rescued and set free. The price of his precious blood. So 
So today we do look back and we look ahead. We look back to his birth, but we're also looking ahead to Good Friday, what is to come. And like Simeon and Anna were constantly in the temple, worshiping and praising God, may we be like them as well. Having that desire to come here in this temple, knowing that the glory of the Lord is in this place, that Christ is present here through His Word and through His Supper, that here we do receive the Lord, His salvation, His light, His glory. Blessings of his redeemer. When it comes right down to it, who cares about the groundhog? No, Punxsutawney Phil isn't even right half the time. We've got more wonderful things to celebrate today, don't we? Jesus is our light, our salvation, our redeemer. That we have the blessing this day and every day of walking in that light, of receiving that light, of rejoicing in that salvation, of standing in the presence of the Lord and receiving the gifts that He freely gives. And so this day and every day, sunny or cloudy, we are in the light of the sun. The sun that truly matters. The son of God. And as we hear his word, as we gather in his temple, as we walk in his ways, we remain in the light of the sun. Till that day comes when by the grace of God, we depart this life in peace. Then dwell in that place that knows no darkness at all, but only light and life. Amen. I invite you to turn to page four in your bulletin as we continue with the prayers of.